We begin with Sean. He says here, I only swim to prepare for triathlon open water swimming. Should I learn how to do flip turns? Is it worth learning and doing when I'm preparing for something that does not include flip turns in open water? A flip turn may or may not increase your speed depending on how good or how experienced you are at doing flip turns. For youth swimming, you know, as a youth swimmer and the youth swimmers that I coach, working on the speed of flip turns and their streamlines and their kick off the wall is one of the first things I work on with the younger kids. And it's something that I'm constantly working on at every single practice because that is for them free speed. Hmm. If they can nail their turns and more importantly, their streamlines and kicks, they usually dolphin kick off the wall then that is only in the long run going to make them faster once they get good at it and to practice, you know, you got to practice something if you want to become better at it. So it's definitely an important component as an age group swimmer. Now, my first thought to Sean is, you know, why not learn a flip turn? It's something new. It's something different. It's a challenge. And it's just another tool you have when you swim especially if you end up swimming with other people in your lane or you join a master swim group because a master swim group is going to be composed of a variety of experience levels. And most swimmers who swim for an extended period of time, they just want to learn a flip turn because again, in the long run, the more you practice flip turns, the faster you will be. Now, having said that, when someone does like a baseline swim test, for example, a 1000 for time to get their baseline. And then they want to repeat the test. They should repeat the test. If they didn't use flip turns the first time, they shouldn't do flip turns the second time because that'll impact how you do a turn or how you push off the wall. How hard you push off the wall will impact the number of strokes per 25, as well as your speed. One thing I'm thinking about initially is uh, it works on your breath control because you have to time the flip turn and take a deep breath and then you're pushing off and you're exerting energy, which is taking away some of your breath, it feels like, and then you're getting a couple strokes in before you do your first breath. So there's a, a component of having good breath control underwater. Yeah, definitely. That's a good, I didn't think about that component. Now, one thing I think is almost uh, better with flip turns as you're talking is if you're in open water, you don't get a chance to do a break. Whereas if you stop on the wall, you know, sit, sit up, hold the wall and then push off, you're taking a deeper breath and almost, uh, and then pushing off again for your next 25 or next 50. But with flip turns, you don't get that break and you don't get that break in open water in a race. So maybe flip turns are a smarter, uh, strategy in your workouts, because if you're going and you need that break, you can't get a break in open water during a race. That's a very good point. And when, when you were talking about that, I thought of, you know, maybe not necessarily doing the actual somersault because mm-hmm. that could be um, time consuming for someone to learn and feel comfortable doing a somersault near the wall and trying to get their feet on the wall and pushing off the wall. And by the way, I created a video on the Endurance Hour YouTube channel steps of how to do a flip turn right. as you're beginning to do it. But you can just like touch the wall speaking of breath control, touch the wall, but don't take a breath. So as you're approaching the wall, keep your head down Mm -hmm. and don't take a breath. And then, you know, flip your legs to the, to the wall and then push off Yeah. and then try to go underwater as far as you can before you take your breath. That's a good way to, to, to manage the breath control. And I think it was a great point that you made. You don't rest in open water. Whereas when you don't, when you touch the wall, you probably don't recognize some people don't might not know how much they're resting. They may be taking a longer break than they think they are. Sure. Four seconds versus one second or two seconds. That can be a big deal. You stop, look up, look at the clock, drop down, take a deep breath and push off again. You feel like, okay, I've caught my breath where you can never catch your breath really in a, a race unless you were to maybe go on your back and kick a little bit to catch up on your breath. Right. So again, in the long run, it's a new skill. I think everyone should take advantage of trying to learn new skills, especially now if it's someone's, you know, kind of in their out of season when they're a little bit more random, a little bit more flexible with their training. Now's the time to learn a new skill in the water. 
So I understand the learning skill and Sean's question, is it worth doing that in order to be good at open water swimming? No, I mean, again, thinking about that exact question, is it going to help us open water swimming? I mean, based on what we said about the breath and the, and the stopping and the resting, Mm -hmm. you know, I think learning not to stop and rest is going to rest just by a turn. I mean, of course you want to rest between your intervals, you know, maybe you're doing a set of 10 one hundreds with 20 seconds rest, but if you're resting while you're turning and you're not supposed to rest, yeah, maybe get in the habit of not being mindful of not resting, but that doesn't necessarily mean he has to do a flip turn. Yeah. So I guess my answer to that question would be, you don't have to do a flip turn or, or better yet, you doing a flip turn. Chances are it's not going to impact your open water swim.